Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and we've got an exciting all new show for you this week. We'll check in with Jordan Brown to see how he did out in the fields for the goose opener last weekend. And we'll give you some do-it-yourself taxidermy tips. And Jimmy Gretzinger's also got some fishing action for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have one more story on this week's show. We're actually going to kick off this week's show fishing out of the port of Alpena. Now, that's in the northeast part of the Lower Peninsula, and there is some good fishing there for sure. But what really makes this story special is who we're fishing with. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's the love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse. Offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 and M-53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime Bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, kloutdoor.com. Michigan-based Vanguard manufactures an array of binoculars ranging in size and design, and backed by a lifetime warranty. Discover Vanguard Sporting Optics at VanguardWorld.us. Throughout the year, we try to feature places or events that may be of interest to you, or things we think you may be interested to know about. Well, just about a week or so back in the town of Alpena, there was something worth seeing. The local Northeast chapter of SCI, or Safari Club International, was going above and beyond. Now, each year, they sponsor a child with some life challenges for a make-a-wish type hunt. One kid each year has a hunt of a lifetime. Well, recently, they are now taking the growing number of those kids on a once-a-year fishing excursion and with their entire family involved as well. It was something that when I heard about it, well, I had to just come be a part of it. Alpena was showing off this fine morning with absolutely picture-perfect weather, and as the seven or eight boats hit the water, we had high hopes. Well, what's our game plan here, young fella? So we're gonna head out, we're gonna go just past North Point, and we're gonna stop and set up for walleye. Um, by the time the big boats get out to where they're heading, we should be able to pull some walleye, pick up, switch over to Lake Trout gear and go catch up with them. So nice. we'll see how that E-Tech does, but five people in a boat, we'll get there in a hurry. And who's our main fisherman here today? This is Douglas Lindstrom. All right. He's been our wish hunter in the past and he was our fish first, one of our first wish fish kids and he's coming back out with us today and boy, he loves to fish. So <laughs> it should be an exciting time. You ready to catch some fish, young man? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Carl Hatala was one of the guys putting this event on. Coordinating the boats, making sure families had all that they needed. He was running around trying to make this event all that it could be. And you know what? He did a great job. The families were all very honored to be here. Well, we had met Crazy Carl at our annual Safari Club International Banquet. And Carl and Douglas kind of connected. And the next thing we knew, those guys got to go last year. I couldn't get the time off of work to attend last year. But they talked about it for weeks weeks afterwards and enjoyed it so much and Douglas is pretty sure he's 
one of the founders of the Wish Fish. Cause, nice. You know, he came on the initial one. That's awesome. So how does it feel as a parent to be able to do stuff like this and have all these people helping out? It's amazing. There's so much giving and compassionate people and there's no judgment on any of the children involved or their families and they just open their arms and accept everybody and help everybody with whatever situation they're in and this is just such a great opportunity for a lot of these children to be able to experience the outdoor world and everything it has to offer yeah. there we go thank you fish well we finally had our first laker in the boat and the chatter between the boats, well, that was heating up as well. Fish on! How's it, down. How's it feel, bud? Feel like a good one? Yeah, it feels like a good one. There you go. Yeah. Another good eater. Look at that, he's right off the hook, too. Now this next reaction isn't for the camera or just to see how loud he could get. This is sheer excitement for a big fish. There are a few times each year when I'm around someone catching their first big fish or getting their first buck. Well, that reaction right there was as from the heart as you could ever hope to find. And probably the most excited I've seen someone catching a fish. It was pretty great to see. Say happy wish fish. Happy wish fish. <laughs> yeah, baby. Nice, big These fish. two big monsters <laughs> I got are yeah, mine. Give it a kiss. There, you go, yeah. there were a few other boats with cameras on them as well. And Caitlin Neff, well, she was not far from us, and they were doing pretty good as well. The Laker Bite in Alpena, well, it was on today. Well, it had been a while since I had fished out of Alpena for Lakers. I was there just a year or so back chasing walleye at night, and then some smallies as well. But let me just say, every boat on the water today was into the fish. Not huge numbers, but good, solid action all day long on nice fish. We were in about 100 to 130 foot of water, bouncing bottom with spinning glows and some spoons as well. The good and the bad thing about Alpena is that it is hard to get to. But man, once you're here, there is a lot to offer the sportsmen and women. It was a perfect day on the water for a great cause. Scott Gothier and I decided that as part of the Safari Club, Northeast Michigan Safari Club International, we wanted to put a, a day together that we could get all the kids, past wish hunters together, fish so that they could spend time with their families, put them on the boat, see the excitement in the kids' faces. And being locals from here, him and I, you know, knew that we could get on fish and lake trout were the way to go. It was tough today, but we managed to put every boat, put fish in the boat. So we had a great time and it's such a wonderful experience to be able to give back and, and spend time with the families and get to know the families inside. Not just here, you know, we, we stay in touch throughout the year, you know, and we look forward to re reuniting every year at the banquet and, and the following year. So. One of the guys that was really behind the scenes on this event was Mike Wilmot. I tracked him down on shore to talk a little bit about why this event is so special. Well, because we think we have a commitment to give back. Uh, you can't just go out and harvest animals and take fish 
and not feel that you have an obligation to give back. Somebody gave back for us. Somebody helped make this possible for us in the past. We've got an obligation to give back, and particularly to kids like this, there's no other way that one can say you can do it better than to give those kids an opportunity to experience that outdoors. It's when they first come, they're very timid, they're uncertain, uh, they're very quiet, and uh, by the time you finish that hunt with them, they're totally different. You see their personality, they grow so much, uh, and now it, it's so humbling, you know, to even encounter them. If you go into a public restaurant and you see one of these kids, you, you better get ready because you're going to get the biggest bear hug you've ever had. It, they just can't help it, and it, it's just great. We, we love every minute of it. We probably get more out of it than the kids do. So many of our sportsmen and women around the state give back. They take their neighbor's kids out, they donate their time and money, and we will never get to all of you, but we will try. And in the meantime, thanks to the folks in Northeast Michigan for all you do here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for our next segment on this week's show, I was down in the southern part of the state tagging along with a few guys getting ready for the opening day of the early goose season. No, nope, we're just going with uh, about five dozen today uh, as far as the decoy set up. Little half moon shape. Um, don't expect uh, to have too much problem with that. It's kind of spread today, but um, less the less decoys early season is usually works out better for us. Uh, we don't need a huge spread till late season, so this is what we kind of run early season, and it's worked out pretty good. What about the calling in the early season? Do you guys call a lot, call a little? What kind of? As far as calling, we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of take it easy. We're gonna Actually, the first couple sets of birds that come in, flocks that come in, we're going to just kind of uh, not call much at all, actually. Maybe not even at all. Maybe just a couple clucks, and that's about it. Just see how the birds work. Um, as the day goes on, if if they're talking, we'll talk, I guess is how I should say it. So we'll see how it goes. day goose season down here in Eaton County. Uh, scouted the field pretty good. I think we've got quite a few birds coming in here. It is a big field but uh, hopefully we're on the X and opening day. See what happens. What have you been hearing guys say about the number of, of geese so far in this early season? Yeah, everybody I talked to said they really feel the numbers are down considerably. You know, we really traveled further than we normally have to to find good numbers this year but uh, a few birds back around home but not near what there normally is. Well there were plenty of birds to start the morning but unfortunately they wanted to be on the other side of the field so we patiently waited hoping that a flock or two would land in our spread. In addition to the hunters we had today, we also had a young pup on hand learning the ins and outs of goose hunting. Uh, she's about a year and a half old. She's a uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Um, we've been working hard for about the last year. Uh, been a lot of fun. Spent a lot of time with her. Um, just having a good time with it. Oh, it's just enjoyable. It's uh, like taking a best friend with you every time. It's uh, more fun to watch the dog work than it is to uh, actually shoot the birds. I enjoy that more. Ha, 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 ha. 
Hey, just had mid-morning flock. Just worked like, like they're supposed to, man. Apparently, they knew where the X was finally. <laughs> been a little so, bit of a tough morning. Been a tough morning. Birds, just big field, really big field. Two birds right there. Uh, big field and just not coming, not landing where we want them to. But uh, this flock come from the west and worked really well. So, guess we killed ten birds on that shoot. So, twelve in the bag. One of the guys on hand today was taking part in his very first hunting trip and seemed to be enjoying it so far. Yeah, um, it's been really, uh, it's been quite the experience. Um, never got into hunting until uh, my buddy uh, invited me to come along, so I um, always wanted to give it a shot and, you know, learned a lot today and, um, yeah, didn't really know what to expect as far as setting up and everything. Um, so it was neat to be able to come out here with some experienced guys and uh, have them show me what they do and be part of it so it's been a good time the story of the day was plenty of birds just not quite in the right spot but sometimes that's just how it goes when you're hunting a field this big well it didn't work out quite like we wanted it to uh, had a lot of birds land in the field that 190 acre field they uh, didn't hit the x or we weren't on the x i guess uh, had a couple of flocks that did work in good did some good shooting on them but yeah, we got four four days here in a row to hunt with a holiday weekend and lots of spots. We'll get back after it again tomorrow and see what happens. Special thanks to Adam, Jim, and the rest of the crew for letting me tag along on this year's opener. And good luck to all of the goose hunters out there this season. We wrap up this week's show with a segment that's a little bit different. We're going to take you through how to cape out an animal to make sure you get the best mount possible back from your taxidermist. Now this applies to hunters here in Michigan, but also the hunters that are heading out west to maybe hunt elk or mule deer. On that same line, we're going to touch base on a few new policies that the DNR has recently put in place on what you can and what you can't bring back into Michigan. Hi, I'm Mark Ash from Lost Reflection Taxidermy. Uh, we have a row kill deer here we got from the Clinton County Sheriff's Department for demonstration reasons on how to skin and cape a deer um, for people that are going out of state or even in state too. Especially if you're going out of state now with the CWD and the restrictions, you can't bring anything from out of state. Um, unskinned it has to be basically the skull cap um, and then the cape can't be unskinned basically. Um, so I'll go through the process of how to skin it off the body and also how to cape it off the head too uh, for that purpose. Um, the first thing you want to do uh, once you go out to skin your deer uh, is lay it off flat and just keep in mind uh, more skin is always better than not enough. Um, the first cut that I do I take and I go down to the leg area about say five inches down the leg and make a cut all the way around the leg on both legs and then what I do I go about four inches to five inches behind the shoulder and make a cut all the way around the body. And then what you want to do is make the cut that you put, you did on the leg, just to go up and meet the cut you made around the body. And at that point you peel it forward till you get all the way towards to the head and then you can cut that off and then start with the caping process off the head. Now that you have your deer uh, skinned off the body and everything and off the neck, uh, what you want to do is take a couple of measurements for your tax terms that might help them. One is you want to do one that would be from the front corner of the eye to the tip of the nose. It gives a, an idea on what size form to order. Also another one can be from the tip of the antler down to the nose so they know exactly how far to set the antlers back on the form when they put that together. So what I do, I, pull, I basically pull back on the nose and then I just start making a cut inside the lip line. You don't want to, you want to stay totally away from the hair on the edge of the, of the lip. So what I do, I just keep pulling back. The more pressure you put on it, the easier it will be to not cut a hole in the deer cape. And I just keep cutting this back as far as I possibly can until it's, you can't cut any farther on the face. And the next thing I do, I do what I, they call a Y cut. 
and it's just basically releasing the skin for around the antlers and from the skull. So I just take the back side of the antler, because uh, therefore they won't see the stitch for the, from the taxidermist uh, makes on the deer. So start on the back of the antler, and just cut, try to cut under the skin, and not to cut the hair on both sides. Yeah, just make those meat. And I might, depending on how much skull you have left, it really does not hurt to go down the neck a little ways. These tax terms will sell that up anyways. But you can go down a little ways and maybe stop about six inches or so down, four inches down there. And then the same thing here, if you can, just try to keep pulling on the skin as you cut. Um, one thing too when, you, when you're doing this is to try to always angle your blade towards the antler burr. Because um, what will happen if you don't, you will actually, you know, you'll cut the hide itself, which will make it definitely more difficult for the taxidermist to repair that. Um, one other thing you need to do, once you get to a certain point and you get to the eye, the best thing you can do is to stick your, your finger basically under the skin where the eye's at and try to roll that back and just pull up on the eye as much as you can and then cut down towards the, the eye socket because that's probably the hardest part to not put a hole is the eye, eye area and the tear duct. So you just keep pulling back on that and you're going to have a lot less chance of cutting a hole in that area. And the tear duct, you guess it basically kind of dig down inside the tear duct a little bit and release that skin, but... The new CWD regulations, um, you can't bring any brain matter or anything like that back into the state of Michigan now. So it is obviously a big deal to, to do that, to bring it back, you know, caped out, the cape off the deer, the skull cap has got to be cut off with no brain matter whatsoever back in the state of Michigan. Otherwise, you know, they can take your deer, um, the meat, and give you quite a fine for something like that now in Michigan. So um, something you want to definitely pay attention to if you're hunting out of state of Michigan to have it totally taken care of before you uh, come back to the border of Michigan. Another tip too is that um, the, the best thing you can do with your deer cape is get it free, frozen at a butcher shop or something like that wherever you are. If you're out west, now if you're out west the point where you can't get it to a freezer, uh, the best case scenario would be to flush it down a little bit and then salt it, salt it very heavy. Because what makes that hair fall out is bacteria. And if it gets bacteria very much, the hair is just gonna fall out of it. So if you salt it very heavy and leave it out in an area where it gets air, not in a bag, um, that will help it to stop the hair from slippage and the bacteria will stop growing that way also. So that's one of the best things to do if you're out west, out in the boondocks where you cannot get to a freezer, would be to uh, salt the hide or the cape very well. One other question that a lot of hunters have been asking is how to legally bring a skull back into Michigan in order to get a European mount. Well, the answer is pretty simple. Um, obviously this is a, a cleaned uh, deer skull, European mount, but let's say you want, you're out west and you do want a European mount, but because of regulations you can't bring back the brain matter and everything. What I would recommend on the raw one is to basically make a cut right back here on the back of the brain ridge cut this all out and totally remove all the brain matter and everything else in there. If you do that, then you're, then you're safe. You're removing all the issues, all the things that could have CWD or any kind of disease like that. So that's what I would recommend is to cut this off in a line just like this, remove all of that inside there and clean up the skull as much as you can and you should be fine with that. Special thanks to Mark for taking time to show us a few new tricks and for touching base on how to legally bring game back into Michigan. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you check us out online next time you get a chance. You can see us on social media at Michigan Out of Doors TV. We're on social media every few days letting you know where we are and where we're headed next. Or you can check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. All sorts of new episodes, our older episodes are there. The Wild Game Recipes are on the michiganoutofdoorstv.com website as well. And we do have a lot of fun stuff headed your way this fall. Well, that's right, Jenny. So much happening over the next few weeks here in Michigan Out of Doors. Next week's show, we're going to have my opening day from kind of the mid-Michigan, western Michigan area where we shot a limit of geese. You won't want to miss that. Then we're going to tag along with our good friend Bob Garner. Once a year, we go to the port of Frankfurt with Bob and some friends, and we have a ton of fun out on the water. That'll be on next week's show. I think we may even have time for a recipe next week. And then, of course, we are transitioning into the hunting seasons now. The youth deer hunt is just a week or so away. Lots of good stuff happening here in the great state of Michigan. Make sure you are joining us. If we don't see you 
in the woods or on the water. Hopefully, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Metalloid Firearms and Sports, developers of environmentally friendly firearm maintenance products for cleaning and protecting your firearms metal, as well as wood and leather components, on the web at metalloidfirearmsproducts.com. By the Michigan Chapters of Safari Club International, for over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, advocating the advantages of oil heat for home and environment through products like BioHeat Oil, which blends biodegradable materials into a renewable fuel source. Learn more at oilheatamerica.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man